and it is the holy grail of lighting. We've got DCC controlled lights that we can just access in exactly the same way as we would any of the point work. Big hello to you. So great to see you. Hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Coat. Welcome you up here to the loft on Weir Yard. Now today we're going to be taking a look at an all new range of products that's recently come out from DCC Concepts and they very kindly sent over a pack for review. But you might remember that we did a visit to the shop and got a sneak preview of these and uh, just talked through the entire range and they very very kindly sent me away with one of the economy packs of these to do an install video and just see how well it goes. So we've got that today and this product follows hot on the heels of the LED building lighting system that they debuted a couple of months ago and we also did a review and install guide on those as well and actually it makes it really really easy to have individually controlled lights in multiple rooms of a building and that you can actually access using the Alpha Mimic just through your DCC accessories on your controller and it's it's an amazing way of just getting rid of loads and loads of wires and making things so so simple which after all is supposed to be what DCC is about so I'm really really keen to see whether this range of street and platform lights goes away to filling a big niche in the market and making these kind of lights just as simple too. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts with the full range available to buy today at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Buy, sell or exchange any age or any gauge. Call them now for the very best price. Check them out today at the link below. I'm really excited to take a look at these products. It was really great to have a good close look at the full range when we were up in Settle. And now it's uh, time to see what we can do with them here on Weir Yard. Did they live up to expectations? Well, come with me. Let's take a look and I'll guide you through the full installation. <laughs> Recently, we did a video here on the channel of the all new layout lighting that DCC Concepts released utilizing LEDs and Alpha Mimic boards. Now, the Alpha Mimic board, pre existing products, and they've been using those as part of their panel LED projects and also the working ground signals. And it has allowed the layout lighting to become DCC addressable not need acres of extra wiring, not need extra switching, and be entirely controllable from your DCC handset just through the accessory button. Building on to that success, DCC Concepts, in association with their Legacy Models brand, have now brought out a full range of layout lighting suitable for street lights and wall lights, and they've got a huge different range actually. When we went to visit the shop recently, we were shown all of the different versions that are on sale from uh, gas lamps through these older style electric lamps, wall mounted lamps, both in the gas light and these electric light styles, and then much more modern style street lights. And there's a lot of flexibility in all of these. And these Whilst they do come with their own resistor boards, so you could power them from your DCC bus, just wire them in any way you want to the track or to the bus itself, and you're good to go. They're also fully compatible with the Alpha Mimic boards, which gives us full controllability. And for those DC users, 
they're still compatible through the resistor boards with the standard methods that you would use to power up your layout lighting. And DCC Concepts very, very kindly gave us one of their bumper economy packs, which includes six of the street lights and two of the wall lights to go away and do an install on Weir Yards. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in today's video. But before we do that, what I want to do is to get these out of the packaging and show you just what you get. Now they are also available in smaller packs where you can buy just three of the street lights at a time or a pack of two wall lights. Uh, but these bumper packs make a great starting point for somebody who wants to add quite a lot to their layout. These include a set of resistor boards and those of you who are familiar with a previous uh, now sadly discontinued DCC Concepts product of the buffer stops will recognize those and they work in exactly the same way uh, in this particular package and what you do with these is each of these is a different resistor value so you can vary the brightness of your lamps by soldering them to the appropriate resistor outputs and then connect these to either a DC supply or actually you can also connect them direct to your DCC bus although I'm told it may be something that for longevity of the lights you might want to put a diode across in the opposite direction just to protect the LEDs from the alternating current. But the other thing you can do with these, which is what I want to do, is to make use of some of the Alpha Mimic products and I've got here all of these uh, extension leads. Now these came with the LED lighting kits but these are also available in a variety of different lengths and styles with connectors too so you can put these quite far away from the Alpha Mimic boards uh, in the DCC Concepts range so we'll be using those a little bit later on. Taking these carefully out from the packet we've just got to slide each of these out in turn now the wires are quite thin and fine so we just want to handle these quite carefully to avoid uh, snapping any of those leads. So we start by taking a look at the wall mounted lights and these are perfect not just for stations, for station related buildings you can imagine one of these on your signal box just above the stairs up into the cabin but these are the sort of lights that you would have seen and actually still would see in a variety of industrial buildings as well and a lot of these have survived to this day. Now the uh, little uh, plastic dome is ever so slightly opaque and you might be thinking oh they've let that go a bit cloudy but there's a reason for this and that's because the little LED filament that you see just down inside there when that lights up the slightly opaque dome glows so rather than just seeing the pinpoint of the LED it lights up the full dome just like it would with a tungsten filament bulb. Now these are molded in the color of the plastic, they're not painted, but these are a great starting point for if you want to paint them or indeed put over a weathering wash just to bring out the detail and tone down the slightly shiny plastic finish. They are quite strong as well. I'm actually really giving that quite a bit of stick and there's no sign of that being at risk of getting broken. Now to attach these to a building, you're just gonna to need to drill a small hole for the wires to be fed through. And you do get quite a lot of wire just wound on this piece of card here. And then a quick dab of something like super glue will just secure the bracket in place and then you can run the wires unobtrusively away inside the building and uh, certainly I kind of wish that DCC Concepts had told me that uh, they had these maybe about a week before they did simply because I fitted a new building 
to wear yard and it's glued in place and if it wasn't glued in place I would so much have uh, put these straight onto that building um, but um, it's a shame but certainly these will get used in a future project. Now moving on to the street lights. These have a lot of tricks up their sleeve and I'm going to get all of these out because later on in the video when we do a full installation of these I am going to use them all because these are superb. Again, just be a little bit careful not to damage the uh, wire tails. These are just wrapped around a piece of card. There is potentially a lot more wire than you're going to need. And as with a lot of these things, it's better to have too much than too little. As you can see, again, we've got actually quite a substantial, very, very strong design here. There's... Uh, no feeling of risk of that breaking and this is a multi-stage lamp and this is the same with all of the different styles that they do including the gas lamps and the modern lamps we've got shorter versions you can see they're perfect for mounting onto say platforms and other locations where you don't want the extra height We've got this uh, pole here. It's quite a substantial pole, which you could then mount into a hole either in your platform or your baseboard. And that will hold this perfect, strong and vertical. If you wish the extra height, say as uh, an install in a street lighting position on the road, then this piece fits neatly over that. If you're worried about it coming loose, you can always put in a little dab of glue. But actually, I don't think that that's 100% uh, necessary. And then the kit also includes a bag with enough brass tubes, which we can feed over the wires. And then once you've got that fed in, that then just plugs into the base of that and gives you a good firm addition which gives it the strength when you glue it into the baseboard. So very very flexible just like the wall lights again if we look to the top we've got that slightly opaque plastic dome which uh, does then mean that that tiny little surface mount LED when that lights up we're going to get this glow rather than just seeing the pinprick of light from the LED. The shades over the top are really, really crisp and well designed. And I'm actually marveling at uh, how strong this is. Um, it looks like it could be something that you could accidentally break, but actually you can't. That is incredibly strong. Looking further down, the mouldings are nice and crisp and these do size up quite well to some of the cast iron lighting standards that you would see both on railway platforms, railway property and indeed further uh, around into the municipal area, into industrial areas. And if you look closely around today, you'll still find examples of these out and about. They were incredibly long lived. I used a little bit of PVA just to glue the bases on because I'm going to be installing these at full height. I threaded the brass rods on as well, just uh, getting the wires through them carefully as you can see. And a small dab of PVA to the ends of those two just to hold them in place. And I've left all of this overnight just to make sure that it's all set. I've also picked out one of my smaller drill bits. And you can see here that these are going to be big enough to allow the brass tube to go through the baseboard, but not so big that the rest of the lamp would drop through. So hopefully we'll get a nice snug fit. One final thing to show you is that if you stretch out the wires, you'll find that one end is longer than the other. That is the positive end for wiring up your LEDs if you're going to be using these on a DC supply. 
This is the first area that I've chosen for adding these lamps to Weir Yard. Now, if this building wasn't glued down, I would have added those wall-mounted ones onto the ends of these buildings. And it's something that you can do before you place buildings or if you leave your buildings loose. Uh, but what I am going to do is take this original product uh, DCC Concepts lamp. This is the older style grain of wheat bulbs. And I'm going to replace that with one of the LED ones. And that will allow me to get it to work. At the moment, I don't have a DC supply of the appropriate voltage to be able to make this work. I will save that lamp and use it elsewhere. Moving further around, I'm going to put the next lamp here. And then further along, I'm going to use some more. But let's just concentrate on this area. With the shed moved out of the way, I'm going to utilise the same hole for the wire for these lamps as I had for the lighting in the shed. When I did that install video, I miscalculated the positioning of the hole and actually drilled it through ever so slightly outside of the shed. So this is a great opportunity for me to be able to fix this issue by hiding this with the base of the lamp. And the other one we're going to put straight through where the previous lamp has been fitted. Now it should be a simple task of just uh, breaking the glue and pulling this free. And then bringing in the new lamps, what we need to do is feed the wire through, pick that up underneath. I find it often easier just to bend double the wire at the end, give that a twist, and then you've got something that you can poke down and through and then you can pick that up underneath and just gently pull the wire through don't apply too much force and then once we've got all of the wire fed through it's just a simple task of applying a small amount of glue I'm just going to use a small amount here don't need a huge amount and if anything it's probably as well to leave it so that you could quite readily remove the lamp at a later date if you needed to. I'm just going to work that in, utilise the same vegetation that was surrounding the previous lamp just to hide any, any aspect of the hole. And these do stand up right pretty well. I'm just going to leave that now for the glue to set and then it will be simply a case of wiring it in. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the next wire through over here. For the next hole I've checked the clearances and the lamp would end up being too close to the shed if I put it through the same hole and that also brings with it some potential issues with being able to remove the shed if we glue everything in there. So it's simply uh, an easy task to drill ourselves another hole. And I'm just going to pick a location just here you know, just make sure underneath that we're not going into any cross members. Let's just clear that out just a little bit with a small soft bristle brush. I've prepped the end of the wires just by twisting them up again as before. It's really, really handy. And because we're going to be using the Alpha Mimic for these, so it's not going to be a big issue. And then we just crack on with the install. When it comes to showing you the install underneath my baseboards, there's very limited space. So I'm going to show you on this one just here on my workbench. First of all, once you've got this through the baseboard, it's simply a case of picking up the wires and uh, just tracing them back. And you'll see, as before, one is shorter than the other. They are very thin, a little bit difficult to see. The longer one is the positive, connect that to the red wire, and the shorter one is the negative, connect that to the black wire. One little tip for you if you're using an Alpha Mimic board is to simply wire one of the lamps backwards and then that will allow you to plug it and a companion lamp to the left and right channels on the Alpha Mimic board and then they will both come on together and both go off together. It's a really great way to make the fullest use of your Alpha Mimic board. Now I'm going to tin these first. So with a little bit of no clean flux, I just wipe that on the ends 
of these. And then I've already got some solder on the end of my soldering iron. Just very quickly tin those. The wires that come from DCC Concepts in the Alpha Mimic range, these extension cables already come pre-tinned, but I also like to give them a little bit of flux as well. It just makes the whole soldering job a lot easier. And I'm going to pre-fit some heat shrink, and we'll be using that just to protect the joint once we've got these wired on. The longer one for the red, sometimes it does feel like you need several hands to do this. Just get a little bit more solder on that. And I'm going to solder those together. Check that we've got a good strong join and then retrieve the heat shrink. I can just slide that over the join and then I use that part of the soldering iron just to shrink that down. And that'll grip the join and make sure that we don't get any risk of it catching and shorting on something else. You can see there that shrinks down really really easily and we've got a good solid join. So moving now to the second wire, and again, a small amount of flux. I just apply this with an old paintbrush for ease. You do need to be quite dexterous at times with these. And then I just solder those together. Make sure that we've got a good join. So what we don't want is that pulling apart later on underneath the layout and creating mystery faults that we then have to track down and repair. And again, same as before with the shrink wrap, and then we're done. And our lamp is then ready to plug into our Alpha Mimic board just using this plug. Underneath the baseboard, I've got them all plugged in. Two of them there, I've doubled up with one of these reversed so that they'll both come on together and both go off together and then I've got others again another pair one reversed one standard and they just plug into the alpha mimic board and pick up the DCC addresses from the block that I'm using for my lighting. With the lamps in position it's really a simple case of selecting them on the DCC handset so we go to select accessory. First set are on accessory number 70 as part of my lighting block. And I have programmed the Alpha Mimic board to actually be above any of the accessory numbers that I use for my points. So we're going to OK that. And then we're going to put them on. And it really is that simple. Select the same accessory number again and turn them off. And it is the holy grail of lighting. We've got DCC controlled lights that we can just access in exactly the same way as we would any of the point work. Again, in the area that I've added lights to the fuel depot and the other side of the TMD, select the accessory number, turn them on, turn them off, turn these ones on, as you can see, absolutely simple to operate, that look great, just like the prototypes. They're robust, so easy to install, and with the use of the Alpha Mimic board, then it is just a simple task to control them on DCC. The packs also come with those resistor boards, and for those users wanting to run these off DC, it's quite simple to just make sure that you've got a smooth 5 volt supply. Wire these into those resistors. If you want it dimmer, then use the higher value. If you want it brighter, use the lower value. But it is important to make sure that you do use those resistors to protect the lamps from being damaged.
As you saw, the install actually came together really quite easily. I'd estimate maybe an hour underneath the baseboards doing the soldering and just threading the wires through. And that's probably more about me not being the world's greatest solderer than anything else. And actually, I don't like doing soldering, but I found it fairly straightforward to do to solder those small wires that come out of the bottom of the lamps to the Alpha Mimic extension leads, which then just plugged straight into the Alpha Mimic board. And that took care of the resistors of the actual power supply. And it also gives you full control through the DCC bus to be able to just turn lights on and off with total convenience from your handset or any other means that you use to control your layout. And this actually does deliver something which we were promised right back at the start of DCC that it would dramatically simplify layout wiring. And actually that's exactly what this is doing. If you've got the Alpha Mimic board right there, uh, it's something that you can have it all self-contained and yet you can control it from anywhere on your layout. No longer do you need those acres and acres of wires all going back to levers that just is an absolute nightmare. That's all gone and done and dusted with this. And I never really contemplated adding a lot of lighting to Weir Yard. It's, again, something I thought it was going to add a lot of complicated wiring. And this new system from DCC Concepts for these lamps, and also previously for the building lighting too, has really made it so much more accessible. It's allowed layout lighting to come to layouts that wiring Luddites such as myself have been able to get their head around. Now we've got a link in the description box down below to take you to where you can pick up the full range of these lamps from DCC Concepts and I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below just what you thought about these. Is this something that you've used on your layout or is this something that actually you quite like the look of and that you will be introducing to your layout? out in future projects. It'd be great to hear from you in the comments section. Please also like, share and subscribe and uh, do check us out over on Patreon to help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. And we've also got some great merch too if you check it out in the shop link down below. But until next time, this is me Jenny Kirk saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Family-run business purchasing collections for over 50 years. From single items to lifetime collections, no collection is too small or too big. Buy, sell or exchange, any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything and certainly will not cherry pick the best items. Rails are only a phone call away. Call them now for the very best price and get instant cash payment or same day transfer. Check them out today at the link below. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, and James Beckett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.